office hours. This is your Monday Minutes. And uh, today, uh, talking a little bit about patient assessment and, and ways that you can get patient responses and more importantly, useful patient responses, right? Now, patient assessment is a, uh, it's not as easy as your ABCs. If you've been doing EMS for a while, you realize that it's a lot more than just getting vital signs or getting a patient's medications. A lot, of times, a lot of times you have to ask questions to patients to get the right answers from them. And sometimes it's not just about just asking a blunt question and getting that right answer, right? Because it's not enough just to ask the questions that are right for that particular patient or that particular situation. Keep in mind that the patients in an emergency and in critical situations, it's hard for patients sometimes to really be able to um, you know, comprehend what you're saying, uh, organize their thoughts, and, and be able to tell you what it is that you're, what you're looking for. So building skills on patient assessment, especially when it comes to things like patient interviewing and building, the, building their patient rapport with patients is important. So today, what I want to do is, um, it's only a Monday minute, so we're not going to get into every individual part, but there's a lot of various methods that you can use, okay, when you're talking about asking quick questions to patients. And what I'm going to focus on today primarily are these four here on the right side of the screen. Your facilitation, um, being able to be quiet, uh, clarification, and redirection. Go a little bit more to each one of these uh, one at a time here. Now you've got these others here on the left, you know, showing the patient empathy and uh, ways to confront the patient without being confrontational. Reflection is a way. And of course, summarization is another way to kind of get what you want out of a patient as well, especially if they're confused and they can't uh, gather up all the information that they're trying to get to you, okay? But today we're going to focus on the ones here on the right hand of the screen and give you some maybe, maybe some tips on how you can use these forms of communication and forms of, of, of uh, formatting your questions to them to get the answers that you need, the useful answers that you need. So facilitation, a lot like this little oil can here and these little wheels, right? You know, sometimes pages hesitate to answer questions that you that you're asking them completely. Okay, maybe they're gonna give you a partial answer or 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 not answer at all or nod their head, things like that. So if you've got patients that are like that, one way you can do is try to encourage them to provide you with more information. So you can say things like, you know, please say a little bit more about that, or say something like feel free to elaborate or feel free to give me a little bit more information about what you just said, okay? And sometimes that'll give them sort of the push to go ahead and give you more complete answers to the questions that you're asking. And another thing you can do, I mentioned, is being quiet, right? I find this one of the more useful things that you can do as a EMS provider, especially when you're asking questions, okay? Not, not to interrupt your patient, not to try to get them to... Uh, answer questions by answering a question with a question or, or following up with more questions on what you just asked them, right? Sometimes, you know, if a patient is trying to put something into words and they're having trouble expressing themselves, try doing this, right? Try being quiet, okay? Um, be patient with them, okay? Don't say anything for a few seconds or so and let the patient talk. Give them an opportunity to go ahead and answer that question and, you know, kind of formulate in their mind how they want to go ahead and express what's going on with them. And clarify, right? You want a clarification. Now, this is something sometimes you're going to have to do because patients will give you answers and they're not really clear to you, right? So if you don't understand what a patient's told you, ask them to explain what they mean, all right? Um, this is going to let them know that you're listening to them and you're taking what they're saying to you seriously but it's also going to help you understand more what they're trying to tell you when you ask them to elaborate a little bit more on what they're they're actually trying to say. So tell them you're listening and tell them that you understand what they're saying, but you're just looking for a little bit more information, okay? And you know, I think you'll find that using this clarification technique might help you when patients are sort of short-answered um, on what they're trying to do, sort of going back to facilitation type of a um, questioning, right? And what about redirection? Sometimes we have to redirect our patients when we're asking them questions, okay? Sometimes they're not answering things that we want to 
uh, folk want them to focus on, right? So sometimes they have to redirect them in order to do that. And this is this goes with building skills as a provider and building skills with your patient assessment. Sometimes patient might mention something to you in passing, or maybe they're going to avoid answering the question. Okay, like I said, you know, you ask them a question about breathing, they start talking about their stomach, right? So you want to go ahead and try to redirect them with that, okay? And, and what you can try to do is just try to redirect them to that question that you just asked, okay? And you might have to do it several times, okay? You might have to do it a few times with them until you can redirect them to those questions that you need answered in order to treat them, transport them appropriately, okay? Um, and you might have to do it a few times to reword your question a different way until they answer it the way that you need them to answer it. So guys, listen, this is a quick Monday Minutes, right? We can't get into every little nuance with each one of these different forms of, uh, of question ans answers and, and you know, strategies that you can use to uh, get the most useful response possible from your patient. But I hope you can use them. Um, I hope that uh, maybe these four things uh, are something that maybe you're doing already. Uh, maybe you can enhance it a little bit or maybe you can even share it with your coworkers when you see them struggling to get answers from patients that are useful and that are related to the emergency that you're on. Um, please be sure to send them over to me. Send me your tips and how some maybe some tips and techniques that you use when you're interviewing your patients and you're trying to get the best response from them as possible, especially when they are in an emergency and they're having a problem. Um, you know, developing the answers and formulating the, the, the responses that we actually need. Guys, if you're interested in stuff like this and you want to really know how to build patient rapport with your patient, you know, there's ways to gather intelligence, you know, power of first impressions and, and authority and trust. Um, this, is, this is a video presentation that I did here uh, a while back. It's a two-hour video presentation. It, it really exposes speech that can help build or destroy that rapport with your patient, okay? It kind of ties into what, what I mentioned today. Um, and again, it goes into key factors that influence your patient rapport, that trust with the patient. Um, you recognize the language that you can use uh, to build that trust and of how to avoid language that, that can actually make a patient shut down, especially when asking questions like we just talked about. Um, you know, uh, things that you can avoid to have them shutting down and not be able to redirect them, not be able to get that clarification or to uh, get that uh, facilitation of the answers that you need. Okay, so you can click here, you can get all the other details on this and what's included with this uh, video presentation um, over on the main website. So just click, you can look anywhere in this graphic here, or click the, click the uh, get access link here below. Guys, again, I hope you can use these Monday Minutes. If you have some minutes of your own, whether it's about this topic or another, be sure to send it over to me. My email is contact at emsoversiders.com. And until next week, as always, Jim Hoffman, stay safe.